Okay. So uh, I think it's going to mean, Sean, that now I'm host again. I, if somebody, if there are people that need to come in, I, I'm going to I'm going to see them. So I'm just going to let them in. Is that okay? So here comes okay. Bryce. Bryce needs to be in. So if that interrupts, if that if I see that pop up, I'll just add people in. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's just. Okay. Right. Cool. Okay. So let's just do a take two. So. All right, so thanks everyone. It's James Watson. Pleasure to share with you through, um, insider secrets, really, from three years of running a marketing agency. Now, although many of you know me, um, just super briefly, I mean, I have a background doing a bunch of different stuff, including running an offline business. So back in 2006, uh, with my wife and I, we started a little delicatessen down in Bath in, in the UK, and it was an interesting experience, to put it mildly. Um, makes you realize how damn tough it is to run a small local business that, that has you know brick and mortar presence it's extremely tough extremely hard work not something i frankly ever planned to do for the rest of my life but uh, i learned a lot from it, it was successful but took it takes everything you've got and, it, and obviously it's limit there are limits in terms of what you can what you can produce from it but one of the things i did produce was was well, help my wife to, to produce a, a website which got her traffic and expert positioning so i got her on national tv in um in kind of big magazine publications so, uh, as you can see a picture of her here and we won awards for the websites and, and stuff like that so i learned a lot about online marketing because of this offline uh, business and that's really what got me into the power of online marketing and using it for my own business then people started asking me to help them with their businesses too now that led into a massive huge business with a business partner. Uh, we trained thousands of people in the UK and around the world on a variety of subjects, how to become a, a, a well-known expert in your market. And in the middle of the last decade, we had an enormous e-commerce business. So seven figure e-commerce business started from scratch, eventually sold that um, about 2017. And we had a multi seven figure training business that was, that was, that was huge. And this is me speaking in front of um, customers, right? Clients, people who were starting Amazon businesses as well, and, and we were their coaches and guides along that journey. So that was a huge thing that that, um, that happened in the middle of the last decade. But after getting out of that, I wasn't too sure really particularly what to do. And eventually, I spoke with a friend of mine who was running an agency, and and he said he was using LinkedIn to generate leads for his agency. He was actually offering AdWords services to his clients. And he said it just went really, really well. And there was no cost to customer acquisition. People were friendly. And eventually people started asking him to help them do LinkedIn outreach. And he said that was also a pretty easy service to be able to offer at quite a high ticket, talking four figures or multiple four figures per month. So, so he said, you should just try it. And that's, so that's what I did literally around about three years ago to the month. I got started actually it was about February. So it's, it's just over three years, but I first started, um the outreach and then speaking with clients around about april time and after about 12 13 calls got my first client and you know had six more within a few months and and ever since i've been running a linkedin managed service agency for a small number of clients that, that i've personally been working in and handling but it's been very part-time very leveraged and very low stress uh, certainly compared to sending emails. I've done cold email marketing as well as LinkedIn. LinkedIn management is infinitely easier than managing cold email campaigns. So, uh, so it's been something that's, um, it's, it's kind of, it was ideal for me back then to get into and people generally love LinkedIn. They love the idea of LinkedIn. So it's, um, it, it also gets a lot of results. It, it typically, I've seen maybe about five to one in terms of positive responses come from LinkedIn campaigns compared to running cold email. Now, obviously, both are great, but so it's just my experience and, and not, not just mine as well. So LinkedIn really is good for getting results in not in every market, but obviously in, in many B2B markets, especially not not only B2B, but um, it does particularly suit B2B. It's a great place to be. And you can see the numbers here just from the first 18 months of me. Uh, of me uh, running this agency, so over 100,000 connection requests, 30,000 new connections made, lots of responders uh, and leads, over 1,500 people actually asking for more information for, for various clients. So this is really, this, this approach you know, gets results. Now, let me share with you then the four, from the four lessons I've learned from running this 
a part-time multi six-figure lifestyle agency, the power of LinkedIn. So this is the system that, that I was using, that, that I started to use, and it still fundamentally is the main approach that are used today. And there are five stages to it. And I want to walk you through these stages and also um, share with you some tips so that you can actually take some action to increase and improve your LinkedIn profile right now. So that I know many of you are interested in doing LinkedIn outreach, especially for your own businesses, then th these tips should help you to, to become more effective in that outreach. But fundamentally, the, the, I mean, the process is this. You know, you're in, there is a little pre-phase where you're improving your LinkedIn profile, which we'll come on to, but then you're going to compile a lead list in Sales Navigator. You're going to send them daily connection requests. And for those that accept, then you're going to send them follow-up messages. Um, typically two or three spaced out seven to 10 days. The ones that respond, you positively put them onto a tracker sheet and progress as leads. The ones that don't, you don't you record them, but you don't pro um, progress with them any, any further. So a very simple uh, system because you can use automation to do a vast majority of this. So that's the system that's fundamentally still to this day what, what I operate for, for, for my clients especially. And uh, let me tell you a little bit more detail about those, about those steps. And by the way, as I go through this, I've got an eye on the chat. So if you've got questions, comments, whatever, let me know. I'll try and keep an eye on it and, uh, and, and I will respond to them as we go through because I want to cover a bunch of stuff here for you to really give you some of the, the best tips that I possibly can in a short space of time that we've got today to give you some practical useful actionable steps you can take for your own LinkedIn so let's work, walk through these five steps as well as the first stage which is the nine ways to optimize your LinkedIn profile then we'll run through the, the five steps one by one so let's get started in the beginning then nine ways to optimize your LinkedIn profile. So I've looked at this and really these are the nine most important elements that you want to optimize before you reach out to people. Because when you're sending someone a connection request, they're going to go and look at your profile. So when they look at your profile, then they're going to make a decision. Is this somebody I want to allow into my network or not? So if you don't make a, a, a good positive first impression, there's a, a low chance that they are going to uh, to see the value in accepting your connection request. So first impressions count, which is why you need to have things like number one, a profile photo. So the profile photo you can see of me, of me here in the middle, that is, you, you know, you, you, you just got to, it's super important. There's only two bits of information people see when you send the connection request. They see your profile photo and the headline, which is 120 characters beneath my name which is the, if I could show you how to get more clients, et cetera, et cetera. So those two bits are the, mo are the two most important elements you need to optimize first in your LinkedIn profile. So the photo matters. Don't use a crappy photo of you cut out from a wedding, or uh, I saw one that did a consult with a guy who was wearing his hoodie. No, 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 no. This, you you got to be dressed up for business here. Look serious, look professional. Preferably look directly into the camera. So I want to see the, the you looking directly into the into the profile picture. Unless in this case, you know, if you're speaking clearly on stage, which positions you as an expert, then you might be looking slightly to the side. No problem at all. But people can see that I'm speaking, so that's so that's fine. So have a have a good clear picture. Uh, another mistake I see is when you, you like a full body picture. I don't need to see a full body picture. I don't need to see a background. It's not about where you are. It's just about you. So chest up. Is, is, is all I want to see in terms of either just a headshot or kind of head and shoulders shot. That's all we need to see. Nice and clean. Nice smile. Smile. Smiling. Just like when you're public speaking, smiling is super important. Smile on your, on your photos. It's not a passport photo, right? You're allowed to show personality. And this is how you're going to engage people and win trust. So the profile photo is important. The headline, as you can see, there's 120 characters is important too. Now, most people will put their job title in there, CEO, founder, partner of ABC Corp, right? That is a waste of space. It's a wasted opportunity. Nobody really cares about that unless you're the, let's say you're, let's say a high level employee at some big company or something. But even then, you know, people will see that in your experience, which we'll come on to. So make your headlines something that's all about your prospects, not about you. So people that are reading your profile, when they're coming to make a decision, should I accept with this person? 
have them read this and make them ask uh, ask themselves a question internally that hopefully resonates with them and then that they will be interested in enough to accept your connection request at least bare minimum if not respond to your messages and ask for for more information so here i'm asking them a question if i could show you how to get more clients with linkedin and retain them longer with sales automation would you be interested so it's all about them it's not about me it's about them and that's one thing the second thing is it is very it's a question which is easy to say yes to hard to say no to like I, I challenge you right now, look at all of your LinkedIn profiles. Can you look at the, your profile and say yes very easily? And I can guarantee you, unless you're doing something like this, the answer is going to be no, because it's a statement that you're making and it's probably not a particularly engaging one. Where this is a question that if somebody's interested in getting more, bis more leads, it's easy for them to say yes to that. And that's all we want them to do. Because when they say yes to that, they're going to accept the connection request and they'll be prepared to listen to, to what you've got to say when you engage with them subsequently. So there's a lot of work to be done in that copy, in that headline, to put the tip the balance in your favor for getting them to accept your connection request. So number three is the header image. Now that's by far the least important on this page, actually. So I don't, I don't particularly care too much what you do on the header image. Sometimes I used to put the 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 headline on the page here so the, the if it's especially if the question is well crafted well written and engaging then putting that on the page would um would, would again just another way they could they can't avoid seeing the question that you're asking them to to see and remember this is not this is not necessarily an offer although it could be an offer because obviously many of you guys have got strong offers and when you've got a strong offer you can put your strong offer on there so it, it really depends what you know what what business you're in and, and what your particular offer is but if you've got a strong offer then make it visible don't let people you know struggle to see how you can add value to them make it easy for them and they will accept your connection request and show more interest in what you've got to say so the about summary is the next part now you can see the about summary here on in the in the middle panel you can see there's about three lines before you have the see more. So that's really important uh, real estate, American, American friends would say. So the, you, you've only got those three lines before people have to make a decision. Do I click on see more? Do I want to see more? So you've got to make a strong impression in that about summary. So here I do something which I call the power statement. What I do, I help B2B businesses craft compelling messages, generate leads and sales without advertising. It's a power message, who I help, how I, the results I help them get it and how I help them and how, you know, my methodology to get them those results, or I'm saying what I, what they don't have to do. So it's, it, it, it's compelling enough for people to want to click on see more and then read the rest of the about summary, which you can now see on the right. And in my case, what I've done here, a couple of things to note, you can see these bullet points this draws the eye path in to read. So what I do, what others say, that's where you want to lead people in to then read on. And now when you have testimonials, you want to use testimonials as much as possible. Because in this case, the testimonials explains exactly what I do with real world examples, filling sales funnels with ideal clients, significant new business, masterclass in sales management, right? This is not me saying it, it's not my opinion. It's the opinion in this case of Rebecca, who's a client of mine, right? And you can see client uh, her, her recommendation further down the page. So when you, you wanna work hard to get these case studies and testimonials, then you gotta leverage them. Most people under leverage their, their testimonials, their case studies. I did this for a client, took his rec just excerpts from his recommendations, put them into his about summary. He showed his clients and his colleagues and his colleagues said, I didn't even recognize you. Didn't think you were the same guy. That's how much of an opportunity most people are missing out on when they have good testimonials. So fight, do whatever you can to get those testimonials, get them written, get them published as recommendations, and then put them up into your about summary so that people don't have to scroll down LinkedIn in order to find them. So again, as I go through this, guys, if you have questions in the chat, let me know, okay? Because I can see them, so I can I can cope with reading your questions as well as going through the going through the lessons. So so don't be shy. So the next steps, number five, featured. This is great. So this is relatively recent that LinkedIn introduced this. So here you can put in media. Again, this is a great opportunity to improve your expert positioning, and most of you don't do anywhere near as good a job as you should, and frankly deserve to. 
to de to demonstrate expert positioning. Now, you don't have to be in the in the business for X number of years to be an expert. Like you guys are all experts. The knowledge you have is way more than everybody else in the in about let's say ninety nine percent of the rest of the world in terms of marketing. Like you know so much more than everybody else. You just need to convey that to people. So how can you do that? Well, create a, a PowerPoint like this, even just a simple one that explains the methodology that you use, how you get results, and then share that as a PDF, upload it in here. That's all I've done in, in this first one here. It's a, it's a methodology, how I get results that people can download and read. Then uh, the next one is an image. So this book, I, I've, I know I've spoken with a number of you. I haven't got the book is not published yet. It is in the, you know, still, we're still writing it yet. I've got the cover out there so that people can see that I am at least in the process of writing the book and it looks great, right? That's just an image uploaded. But you could also link to posts on LinkedIn or articles or external media. Just have one or two things that really lift your expert positioning in the marketplace. It doesn't take a lot to stand out amongst the crowd. And so when you do this, it'll help a lot. Now, number six is experience. So as you can see, the experience is the, is the business that you own, the company you work for. This is where you can talk more specifically about what you do and, and how you get results. So you can see I'm following the same approach as in the about summary. Proof it works, what we do. These are pre-headlines in all caps that draw the eye path in. This is exactly the same principle as Amazon uses in product pages or what you know smart Amazon sellers do because it draws the eye path in so it makes it it makes it easy for people to comprehend what it is that you say don't make them fight and they and again you'll get better results so here just break down what you do into easy to read parts and people will jump around uh, but they will read more of it when you break it up this way and also the call to action make it simple for them I like to keep people on the platform. I say, just connect with me here on LinkedIn because the majority of people that are reading this will only be reading it because you've sent them a connection request. And so you, it, so basically you want them to accept that connection request. That's the, the, the only call to action you really care about because then you can follow up with them with other messages. You've got a channel opening up of communication, which is incredibly powerful for, for obviously for, for direct response. So just ask them to accept your connection request, ask them to message you, make it small, simple baby steps for them to, to say yes. If you ask them to jump on a call immediately, it's a much bigger hurdle for them to accept. And by the way, I just wanna make this clear. This is my, the, at the bottom of this screen here, this is the link to my LinkedIn profile. So go and check out my profile. So I'm showing, sharing this info from. Feel free to connect with me. Send me a connection request if you haven't already and uh, it would be great to connect. So the last three ways to optimize your LinkedIn profile, skills and endorsements. So on the, on the right here, on the top right, skills and endorsements, these are keywords. What do you want to tell LinkedIn and, and people on LinkedIn that you are good at? So just go through the whole list, of, think of as many different keywords as you can and, and LinkedIn will suggest a whole bunch, especially if they're marketing related and put them in there. Having, in, having nothing in there doesn't make sense and having irrelevant ones in there doesn't make sense either. So, so um, have marketing related keywords if you are running a marketing agency. Number eight, recommendations. I've touched on that already, super important. I mean, once you get to the stage you have 26 recommendations as I've got, you can send people to your to here and say, look at my 26 recommendations. This is how you convert people. This is how you reassure them that you have a track record of working with people. Like they're not going to say, can I speak to your clients when you say, well, you, you don't need to go and look at my 26 recommendations. There are my clients. They tell you exactly what, what outcome they've got from working with me. So it's incredibly powerful. So again, you just need to prioritize. Uh, you just need to prioritize. Sorry, guys. So Zoom is making it tricky for me to add new people in. Okay, let me just. So, Sean, I just got to stop a minute here and. James, don't worry about it. You don't need to yep. let them. If, yep. if, it, if they're they, late, they'll let them. Okay, right. Yeah. It's kind of it's messing with me trying to do this now. So. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, man, okay cool. All right. So guys, you're in and that's it. Everyone else is locked out. <laughs> so, so back to recommendations. Yeah, super important. Get as many of them as you can. And then, and then you can screenshot them, use them on your websites, wherever you want to. And, and, you know, 
pretty much once you've screenshotted them, then nobody can take them away from you, right? So work hard to get those recommendations, do whatever you need to. Again, if you're, if you're doing a service for a client and you're offering them a discount, don't just say it's in exchange for a case study, say it's a case study and a, and a recommendation on LinkedIn. Like this is the most valuable social proof platform you, you, you know, you're gonna have because people believe it. It's linked to the real people's profiles and pictures. Final thing then is groups. So make sure you join groups that are relevant for your target market as well. So again, if you're targeting people in, in a specific niche, join the groups where they would be in, not the ones where you're in. So don't just join marketing groups. That doesn't help you unless you're targeting marketing agencies, which it would make sense. Um, groups are, are powerful because then you have something in common with people once, you, once they see your connection request. So those are the nine ways to optimize your profile. Let's very briefly touch on the five steps in the process. So as I mentioned, first of all, you're going to build an ideal future client lead list with Sales Navigator. Now, I highly recommend using Sales Navigator. Two reasons. It gives you higher commercial use limits for searches. Like I had one person message me recently that he's got restricted to sending no more than 100 connection requests per week, which is something new, which LinkedIn is now doing with certain accounts. And I asked him, is it a free account or a premium account? And he said it was a free account. So you're just not going to be able to prospect very much if you have a free account. Now, if you're doing less than 100 a week, that's connection requests, fine, then, then you can get away with that. But if you want to do double that, then you'll need Sales Navigator. The other reason to use Sales Navigator is you just get more data points to be able to build targeted lead lists about. So you get more fields to be able to, to, quali you know, to qualify and target and narrow down the people that you are reaching out to compared to the non-premium level. So for me, Sales Navigator is cost of doing business if you want to be using LinkedIn seriously as a lead gen channel. It's just as simple as that. Step two. The day once you've got your lead list, then you're going to plug that lead list. I mean, you, you could actually you could reach out to people manually or, or you can use software. I'll talk more about the software in a minute. And you can see examples of I mean, they, they are screenshots inside of LinkedIn, but they, they were using software to send out the messages, the connection requests and follow up messages. Typically now, I only send 30 new connection requests per day at, at most, 200 per week, 800 to 1000 per month. You used to be able to get away with a lot more than that. And you might be able to get away with that temporarily. But uh, it's risky, highly risky to do more than that. And I know other people chatting with on Twitter who said that that's exactly what they do as well. 30 new connection requests a day and, and that's it. So, that, so again, you could have a VA do this manually or you could do it yourself if you're just getting started or you could use software. I prefer software. Software is more reliable than human beings. There's, there's no doubt about it. So you should expect anywhere between 20 to 50% of people to accept your connection request. If it's lower than 20, you need to work on your targeting, you need to work on your expert positioning or your offer and messaging. Between 20 to 50% is, is pretty acceptable. And like over the 18 months, I showed you the stats earlier, the average was 28.7% after over hundreds of thousands of, of connection requests. So that's kind of the average. It might have come down now a little bit, especially obviously in the last 18 months as more and more people have been doing this, but it's still, that's what you should be aiming for. I have clients that, you know, get up to that level all the time, especially when they have higher ex perceived expert positioning. So use a step three is using a follow-up engagement sequence. So once you've got the connection request, now you can send them messages, two to three within 10 days as a general rule. Again, using automation tools. Um, and my recommendation tool is getexpandy.com, which is my link through to Expandy. And I've migrated all of my clients over to it in the last six months, tested it extensively. It's not the cheapest, but it is, in my experience, the best quality, the best value, and the best support, um, as well as best functionality for all, all of the different ways that, that, uh, that I use it. Um, you can give, for example, clients access to their Expandy account and they love that. It makes it easy for them to be able to follow up with leads, especially if you're not using uh, a CRM of, of some kind. And even if you are, it just makes it easier to interact with the LinkedIn account. They don't have to log in to the person's LinkedIn account. Like I have multiple clients where an assistant is, is responding to the LinkedIn replies on behalf of the, the account owner, that's normally the CEO or owner, and but they don't have to log into their account and deal with all the security issues that goes with that. They can just log into their Expandy and they can get access to message people, tag them, and, and it's like a, a mini LinkedIn CRM tool. So it's super valuable tool. But those messages 
are important. I'll talk more about the messaging next because crafting compelling messages is step four. Super important to have an informal tone yet still professional. So again, you can, you can play with different styles, but most people mess up by thinking that LinkedIn messaging is like email. Again, you guys are more educated about email than most, but still the, the generally people lean towards being a little bit more formal than they should. So you want to be informal and get straight to the point, referencing relevant case studies. I mean, I, I designed this, the, what I call the one sentence case study long before um, called Email Wizard did, right? So uh, I've been using it with my clients on LinkedIn because it's really what you should do on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's like, so, and you can see the example here in message one. Recently, I helped, uh, or it says, I thought you might be interested in a new video, video case study I posted on LinkedIn. Recently, I helped a fitness location owner generate 30 appointments and five long-term high-value membership sales in the first week of a new campaign. Watch the video here. Would you be interested in achieving those kinds of results at your location? So when I was going through a, a period of targeting fitness location owners, that's a great relevant case study that uh, I was able to point people to. And a tip, I mean, make a LinkedIn post about your case study and then point people to the LinkedIn post. Nobody talks about this. Keep people on LinkedIn, build social proof on that post. And you're going to be, you can tag your prospects. So if it's somebody that's relevant for, you can tag them underneath that post, just like you can on every social network, right? It's, it's, it's powerful. Use that, that, that opportunity to engage people and draw their attention to your content. Now, again, using humor can be done as well. And you can see me using humor in, in, in these messages. It's an advanced tip. It's risky, right? It can backfire, but look at the, let me draw your attention to the top message where, where I am using something called the signature line. So this is a great strategy I shared with a number of people. It's a real good way to soft sell what you do. So even if you didn't put a direct pitch in the message, you might just say, hey, thanks for connecting. Um, if I can help in any way, let me know. Thanks, James. And underneath that, you can put your signature. In your signature, you can put an offer, you can put what you do, something, again, which makes it clear the value you add without you actually physically pitching them. So, and here I've taken the, the, the humorous route, right? So CEO, membership growth expert, the real Mr. Incredible, disclosure, one of the above is not true. I'll let you decide which. Now, again, humor is dangerous. I'm not going to recommend using all the time, use it. Uh, carefully, but it, when you dial it in, it can be really powerful. And I have used this with clients, even in boring markets, B2B markets, you wouldn't think it would work and it will work. Because at the end of the day, people are people. When you do it well, they can appreciate that, but don't think that's the only way to do it. Just That's just one example of compelling messages. You guys understand the value of a, of a strong case study and a good offer. That's already very powerful. The only other thing I'd say, lead with education, lead with value up front just makes, you know, then you're not selling anything, you're giving away free information that qualifies people. If you that's really, again, if you're not getting the amount of response you want, typically, then you have to put information as the first step to qualify people before you pitch them on your offer. Now, step five. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. So testing, measuring, improving, and then rinse and repeat. So once really, that's, that's the cycle. You generate the lead list, you connect with them, you send follow-up messages, you optimize the messaging, and then you look at the results and you, you optimize accordingly. Just like you do with your, with your cold email campaigns, it's no different from LinkedIn. Put, put, put all those results onto a Google Sheet. And in this case, you can see actually, you can actually put, in the case of, of LinkedIn outreach, you can put the details of the people who've responded onto the client sheet. Clients love this. Uh, we, and I now do this in real time with Zapier. I'm going to show you some zaps of how, how this is done. Um, so, that, so that I used to have a VA export it from the automation tool on it every day. It took them a lot of time, no longer. And so now it's done automatically that this list gets populated whenever somebody accepts a connection request and even when they reply. And this is an example of the detail sheet. So when they've replied, then I somebody manually has to grade those replies. Are they low, medium, or high in terms of engagement? And are they asking for more information, which is RFMI? So that's, so that's something that has to be done. And then those details get put into a weekly summary KPI document. But this is super important. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. So yeah, this is one more example. There was lots of people saying, sure, yeah, thank you. Just showing the, the positive interests. And the, this, again, this is uh, for a client that was uh, targeting prospects here in the UK. 
and you can see the kind of people that were responding, directors, managing directors, uh, etc. So this is the weekly KPI tracker. So where we make it super clear every week what's happening. And then you're not hiding from your results. So we are performance-based at the end of the day. I, although I'm not, I'm not charging per appointment or per lead, I, I charge on a retainer. People still want to see the number of new connections being made, new responders, and people who are interested in the lead magnet or the offer that, that we make in the messaging sequence. So, so make that easy for them. People don't remember. How, how should they? How could they remember how many leads you sent them last week or the week before? Unless it gets written down and tracked somewhere that in a way that's easy to understand, they won't remember. So you've got to convey that value. That's your responsibility. So those are the, the nine ways to optimize your LinkedIn profile and the five steps that I go through in pretty much every LinkedIn profile outreach campaign. They don't really change too much. We can mix in there adding messages to level one connections because once you've built a big base of people, you want to periodically go back and send them messages. Even if they haven't responded to the initial message, go back with a different one. So you can add that into the mix as well as building new, new connections on a regular basis. So again, if you have questions as we go along, I'm just going to keep moving forward, but let me know if you have questions in, into the chat. So as a, as a bonus, I'm not going to go into detail here, but you will have seen me talk about personalized image examples before on Twitter. Um, there, are, there are five examples of messaging that I, I share in the PDF I put together based around the thread on, on my Twitter. And again, if you want to get that PDF with all five examples, just go to connectedclients.co. I know many of you are already on my email list, but that's where you, where you need to go if you want to get a... a the PDF with all with further examples of the messaging because I'm not going to go through them all today for time. So what I will do though is I'll go through one because if you've never seen this method before, you certainly need to know about it because it's one of the, the main most important ways I get results personally and also for clients right now. It's using these personalized messages. Why do these work so well? And I send them through LinkedIn as well as through email, but through LinkedIn is especially powerful because you don't have to worry about any deliverability issues whatsoever. It's probably the number one thing. There's a couple of things I like about LinkedIn. One, which is that it's human to human contact. So it's a, your profile connecting with their profile. So it's a much more personal engagement. Think about cold email. It's very impersonal. You have to fight really hard to build trust and, and, and respect, if you like, and rapport with someone. Much easier with, with LinkedIn because it's more social. That's one thing I like. And the second thing is you don't have to worry about any deliverability issues of messages. You obviously can't scale the volume in the same way you can with email, but you know that if you are sending 30 connection requests a day, they're going to get delivered. If you're sending follow-up messages, they're going to get delivered. It's as simple as that. And you guys know the challenges there are with cold email deliverability. There are many. They they never go away. They change. So it's 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 the, probably the biggest battle with cold email, frankly, is deliverability. But with LinkedIn, we literally don't have to worry about that at all. So back to the messaging. So. In this case, when you're sending a message with an image and people can see the whites of your eyes, as they can see here, it just really builds trust. I mean, we are hardwired psychologically to this is how we built trust with each other back in cavemen days. You know, and when you how can you tell when someone is lying is when they don't look you directly in the face. So we know this subconsciously. So look someone in the face and trust is is built immediately. It's harder to be offended. And for people to click the spam button or disconnect button in the case of LinkedIn, because how many spammers send you selfies of themselves, right? It just doesn't happen. It's very hard to be offended by that. And remember, we're not trying to piss everybody off uh, with, with our messaging. It's super important that we, we don't have people um, complaining or, or you know, sending them spammy messages because it's going to land you in trouble with email as, as it will with LinkedIn. So people will give more consideration to your offer because that trust is built as well as there's more curiosity. And LinkedIn gives us this opportunity to use the LinkedIn profile picture. So you can see a couple of examples here on the screen where I'm using the profile picture of the person I'm reaching out to. And it's literally where you see your own photo appear in a message. Like the, your subconscious demands you read it. You, you've got no option. Like it's hardwired. You're going to pay attention to it. So, so um, it's very, very powerful. Even if your offer is not necessarily stellar it, you, people will give more consideration just because it you've gone to more effort to personalize your outreach method and, and because they're looking at themselves it's like they just can't look away from it you're intrigued by it 
Now, again, that said, you're, you're still going to need a good offer. No amount of personalization will make up for a poor offer, but this definitely helps get more response than you would do typically all things being equal just with a, a an equivalent message text only that's what i found in my experience and across multiple clients so personalized image marketing the tech stack two tools you need to use what for for linkedin it's expandy again and that that obviously just delivers the message through linkedin channel the software i use to create the personalized image is hyperice so hyperice.net will be my referral link and the images you create in Hyperize, you can use both in email, pretty much any email client that gives you the code, as well as via LinkedIn. So again, it's a very flexible process and you only pay for the impressions you use. So I think for, for the account, uh, for one account, you get 10,000 impressions a month and you get up to 20 live images at any one time. So it's, a, it's more based around the usage, not about how many accounts. So you could use those 10,000 impressions. I use them across all of my different clients. Those images, of course, I've never needed to get more than one user account yet to, to, to create images for myself and for all of my clients. So it's, um, it's actually pretty cost effective uh, as, a, as a tool to use. So that's the tech stack. Again, happy to take questions, guys, if you want, if you have any. Otherwise, I'll keep rolling. Can Expandy be used for multiple clients? Yes, it can. It absolutely can. So, um, so going back to Expandy, you you you, literally, you see in the drop down in the top left, you see my name. You just got a drop down there where you would select. You just well, the plus is where you'd add a new client account, and then the drop down menus you'd select which client account you want to log into, all from the same login. So it's super easy to switch between your accounts, clients' accounts, all in the same interface. Very easy to use. Question. When do you typically send the images in the message sequence? So yeah, you, so good question, James. So you, you can't send the images in the connection request message. So the connection request messages has to be text, but once they have accepted your connection request, every single subsequent message, you can include an image if you want. And definitely, I mean, I, I've used images in multiple messages. I think the example um, here uh, with Joe, when, when he responded, uh, it was he responded to the second message that I sent him with an image. It didn't respond to the first one, but the second one he did. So yeah, don't feel free to use more than one messages, more than one message in a, an image in a in a message sequence, um, because again, the the power compounds when you use different kinds of images in different ways. People see the the um, the value. Right. So let's keep moving. So. That is for LinkedIn. Again, I'm happy to come back and answer questions on LinkedIn when we get to the end. But let me run through the other three lessons that I wanted to share with you from running this part-time multi-six-figure lifestyle agency. So power number two, or lesson number two rather, is the power of client retention. Now, what do you see on this screen? Somebody type into the chat, what do you see in this screen? And how does it relate to your marketing and your engagement with your clients? What do we need to do with our clients? Anybody guess? This is where I should, anybody guess where I'm going at with this? Keep them invested? Yeah, no, I'm, there's one specific thing that we need to do. The clues in the picture. <laughs> Treat them like royalty. Good guess. Not quite, I wouldn't agree with that. But keep them in the castle. Yeah, lock them in the castle. <laughs> it's tempting to do that with some of them. <laughs> Build them an empire, maybe, um, maybe. I, I, I'm got something. Let me let me get to the to where I'm going with this. You might have heard this before, but here are three principles of client retention that I have followed, that I've used to keep clients on retainer for 18 plus months, which is compared to the average agency average the agency average of about 90 days. That literally is across all agencies. Three months is the average retention rate for a marketing client, which is disaster. Like if that is your average retention rate, unless you're charging $10,000, $25,000, in which case that's pretty reasonable because then you, it's just the value of the transaction is high enough that it doesn't matter. But if you're charging you know, 2,000 a month, even 1,500 a month, dare I say, and you only stay 90 days, you're, you know, you're never gonna escape the cycle of, of churn and burn. So, Principle number one is you've got to build a moat around your clients so that no competitor can ever steal them. 
So that was the question for the image. There was a big moat around the castle, right? So you might have heard people refer to this. What is your moat? Uh, in the case of Amazon, anyone know what Amazon's moat is around their customers? Again, type it into the, to the chat. What is Amazon's moat that they use for their clients, for your customers? You're probably all Amazon customers. We're all Amazon customers. Anybody, anybody tell me what Amazon's moat is. I need to have a timer on screen. We should Zoom had one at the time. Fast shipping, yeah. Unbeatable delivery time, yeah. But what do they call it? What is it? How? What is it wrapped up in? Right. Prime. Thank you, Joe. You've got it. Yes. Prime. Prime membership is Amazon's moat because once you're a Prime member, I think the retention rate, the, the, the retention rate, the renewal rate is like ninety four percent or something. It's like hardly anybody ever leaves. And again, they they Amazon have done research that the average Prime member spends about five times as much as an every non Prime member. I remember this going back from the e-com days, my e-com days last, last decade. So basically, Amazon's goal is what? To get as many prime members as possible, because they know if they get members then they, and keep them, then they, they will stay and then they will spend more. So that is Amazon's moat. Now, we're not Amazon and we don't have prime, but the, the, the strategy is the same. What can you do to build that moat around the client? So I'm going to share some ways how to do that. This is the principle. This is what we're trying to achieve. Okay, It's important to understand that first. Secondly, become principle number two, become so useful to your clients, they never want to never want to leave. Go deeper down the funnel. So I know some of you are going to the stage where you're booking appointments for clients, which is great because once you start doing that, then they really rely on you. You're not just giving them leads and letting them do the follow-up and then they mess it up and they don't get the value and you don't get the value and the relationship ends. So you're going deeper into that cycle, making yourself more valuable. It's much harder for them to disconnect with your services once you go further down the, 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 the path line, pathway of, of, of generating leads and, and qualifying those leads for them. That's not the only way, but the principle is how can you add more value to your clients? How can you keep them, make what you, your service as sticky and as possible, your relationship as strong as possible so they never want to leave. This is the principle that I have followed to achieve these retention rates because I got to be honest with you guys, I haven't, if you ask me all honestly, how much prospecting have I done in the last 15 months? I'm going to tell you very little, very little. Like I'm not having to scramble to prospect because I have my clients stay with me and stay with me and stay with me. Now, again, there's limits. I can't take on 10 of them, right, in the same way. So there are some limits. But in terms of building a lifestyle business that, you know, does fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 a month, like it's very sustainable. I don't have to hustle and hassle to get new clients to, to cover for ones that leave all the time. So again, depends on your strategy. But if you want a relatively easier life and good and good high profit cash flow then then the, the listen retention is everything in your in your agency business I, I don't care who you are what level you're at retention is king and this is just what i've done to to help increase retention from my clients final principle number three sacrifice short-term income to create long-term wealth so i think i tweeted about this the other day this is one of the most important principles that i've i've discovered and learned in business. So there are times when it's tempting to maybe charge your clients for some small extra bit of work that you've done. I rarely do that, you know, in, unless there's a lot of extra hard cost or a lot of extra time. Like there are some clients I've put subtitles on videos for them that I've uploaded to their websites. Now, I don't do that all the time, but I did it for them once or twice. And then eventually then I've taught them how to do it and they go and do it themselves now. But the first couple of times I just did it because I wanted to get them the outcome. They were not going to be able to do it. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to charge them for, for uploading a video and putting some subtitles on, even though it took me a little bit of time to get it done initially. What I did, what I did is I gave them a great outcome and they, they see that I'm not, I'm not trying to grab every single dollar I can from them. And when people see that, they appreciate that. Now, I, I, cause I'm the same. I mean, how do you, how do you feel? Right. You, you're the same. You we're all the same way when people, when you see, they're not just trying to grab every single dollar from you. It's like, you respect them, you like them more, you kind of want to stay with them. So sometimes sacrificing that short-term income will help create long-term wealth. That makes sense. Any questions on any of those three? Otherwise, I'm going to move forward to the, to the secrets for how to, how to implement those principles. So secret number one 
is using detailed key KPIs to demonstrate your value. So we've touched upon that in the LinkedIn section. So those KPIs, again, clients don't remember the value. You've got to be able to demonstrate and document your value so that it is undeniable the value that you've delivered for, for uh, during your service. And again, it still amazes me how few people do this or don't do, the, do as good a job of this as possible. It's literally one of your best assets. I also use it it's one of my best sales tools as well. So not only does it retain clients, I show new prospects these KPIs. And this is often one of the key reasons why they come on board because they can see the results and the documented results I've got for other clients. It builds trust, it builds respect, rapport, and it builds your expert positioning. And it also decreases price resistance. So detailed KPIs. Now, the other thing I'll say about KPIs, don't just copy and paste someone else's KPIs. Build your own. So I built my own from scratch. Build what you consider to be the useful metrics. Now, again, you can take in, in, you know, inspiration from other people, but I found the ones I built myself to be the most useful of all compared to other ones that, that I've, I've just taken from somewhere else. So that's what I'll say about KPIs. Secret number two is having weekly calls with them. So weekly calls. Yeah. Now, again, how many people teach you to do this? Everybody teaches you not to speak to your clients or to build a business where you just deliver results and people will stay because you're delivering results for them. Some will, most won't. It's actually all about the relationship you have with your clients. Like clients will stay with you even if you don't get them fantastic results. Now, what do I mean by fantastic results? I mean, you generate leads for them. Obviously, you want to generate leads and sometimes it might be more, sometimes it might be less. But if they don't convert those leads or as many of them as they should, is that your fault or their fault? It's obviously their fault. Do they know that? Yes, they do. Uh, so like you've, you've done as good a job as you can, but if, you, if they don't do what they should do, it's not your fault. But if they can see that you are helping them and they need that help, they need, still need the leads, they need to learn how to get better to close more, then they will stay with you. So it's not all about them closing 10 deals a month. That's the only reason why they'll stay with you. That's just not the case in the real world. So one of the best ways is to have weekly calls. Does it take more time? Yes, it does. It does take more time. But what is the outcome of that? They stay with you. Retention, 18 plus months, because you become as much a consultant coach advisor as you do agency service provider. That's kind of what I do. It's a real hybrid of a service, coaching, consulting, sharing knowledge, helping them in other ways, way beyond just generating leads, especially how to follow up and nurture those leads, how to convert those leads, and any other things they've got going on. Right? So you become their trusted advisor. And I, I, I cannot recommend enough to you guys to, to try the strategy of becoming a trusted advisor to your clients. And when your clients are of a significant size, so they're, we're talking seven-figure businesses, because if they're less than seven-figure businesses, it's hard. Although I have clients that are less than seven figures, I'm their trusted advisor. They stay with me for years. But as soon as you get slightly larger clients, they'll stay with you for a long time because you, you are now, I mean, I have one client that calls me their marketing director and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a contractor on retainer, but I, he, he considers me and he calls me to other people, their marketing director. Once you have that relationship with them, you've built the moat around them. Like competitors can pitch them all day long. They're not overcoming that moat. Does that make sense? Right. If you've got any questions, let me know. Final thing. Again, I've touched on this already. So provide additional services for free that cost you little. So I've talked about the captioning thing. I, have, I mean, my, my best client that's two and a half years on consistent retainer for, I do a podcast for them. So on one of the calls that we do weekly, we'll take half an hour of that and I'll fire up a podcast recording audio online tool, cost me very little, and I will just talk. Sometimes we'll have guests, sometimes it'll just be with my clients. I'll, and I'll, and I'll, I'll produce that, turn that into an audio file, upload it into a podcast hosting site. It cost me maybe 40 bucks, no, maybe 30 bucks. And that's, I could have multiple podcasts, including my own on theirs. It's not just, there's 30, 40 bucks, no more time than it would take me really to do the call, just a little bit of post-production time, you know, not very much. Um, and do you think they're getting value from that relationship? Do you think they're leaving? Because I'm generating leads for them on LinkedIn. I'm doing a podcast with them. I'm providing them with follow-up nurture tools, which we're going to talk about next. Like the moat is enormous now, right? The value is enormous because they can see I've not been greedy in trying to charge them more and more and more for every little thing. So again, I'm just telling you what I do. I'm not saying that you should do it this way, but by not trying to maximize every short-term dollar opportunity, 
that can substantially increase the long-term revenue that you generate. Again, if you, have if you have questions, these are important concepts, let me know. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep rolling on because there's more good stuff to go through. And let me just check in. How are we doing so far? Good stuff in the chat. Let me know, guys. Good stuff so far. Any feedback, any questions, thoughts? So James, uh, how do you get the client's LinkedIn passwords and details without breaching security issues? I asked them for their username and password. I have a high trust relationship with my LinkedIn clients. The other thing is when you update their LinkedIn profile, the client's LinkedIn profile, so you optimize it. If you're doing outreach for your client, let's say, then it's a high trust relationship. So there's a, there's a, there's a, it means you get, you're, you're helping them to improve their, their social profile, which is very personal for them. So there is high trust. So I have no issues with the client giving me their passwords. I make sure I store those passwords in LastPass. So I have a, a LastPass enterprise account, which is not very expensive, which means I can store usernames and passwords securely in there. I can have my team members access them securely from in there and I'm not storing them in a, in a, in a Google sheet, which I do not recommend you do for sensitive username and passwords. I have a couple of clients in cybersecurity. Do you think I could be storing all their passwords and usernames in Google Sheets, right? It's not, not, not a good plan. I don't recommend it for anybody. So LastPass Enterprise, store their username and password there. It's not a problem. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, Sean, yeah, James. Christian, do you send cold emails all together with LinkedIn connection requests? So it depends. The, the answer is depends. Yeah, and I'm going to show you an, an example sequence uh, coming up, Christian, where, where that happens in a sequence. Okay, so I'm going to come to that. Again, keep the questions coming, guys. It's a small group, so I can handle it. No problem. Okay. All right. So two more lessons. We're officially halfway, but I, I, would, I would say it's not going to be as long to, 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 to run through the next two. So, but I, I want to, these are super important two lessons that I want to make sure that you're all um, clear on because nobody is talking about this on Twitter. Okay. So even if you've missed everything up until now, make sure that you're paying close attention for these next two lessons, right? Because what I'm about to say is giving you a glimpse into the future for how your agency, you, you will want to run your agency this year and beyond. Let me tell you how, how I am running my agency this year and beyond. So Lesson number three from the four lessons learned from running a part-time multi-six-figure lifestyle agency is the power of sales CRM automation. So let's move forward. So let's do something interesting again, interactive. So here are the five core functions of business. I don't care what business you run or your clients run. There are five core areas, lead generation, lead nurture, sales conversion optimization, Delivery and upselling, retaining, reselling, referring. So let so I don't take a screenshot right now of this or in your mind. I rate I want you to rate your own business from one to five on each of those five different areas. So if you're good, if you're the best at in, in the world at lead generation, you'd be a five. If you were the worst, or if lead generation was the worst area part of your business, it would be a one. Lead nurture, again, if you were fan, do a fantastic job, five, poor job, one, right? And in between, so on and so forth. So briefly, where do you think you guys are in these five core functions of, of your business? So rate that for you. Then have a think. Think about a client. If you've got a client or multiple clients or you've got a prospect, where do you think they are? in for these five? If you were to ask them this question. Now, I've done this. I've asked this question to, to a client. They responded back to me honestly, and guess what? They've come on to become a monthly retainer client for me. I'm not, and 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 it's because of the power of this diagnosis that set up the solution that I proposed to them, that established a long-term relationship. Now that I'm I'm helping them with, and then paying me every month to in to to deliver, and I'm not manually managing their LinkedIn. Okay, so I'm I'm advising them, but I'm not manually managing their LinkedIn. So this is. In fact, I have a number of clients. I'm not managing their LinkedIn for anymore. LinkedIn is only one of the things I do because I'm increasingly focusing on this area. So let me show you where the average business is at. Okay. So remember, think about this for yourself. Think about it for your, for your clients. Most businesses on average would be somewhere around about here. So lead generation, let's say maybe a three. It might be generous, frankly, for many people, but let's, let's be generous. Lead nurture, though, would be universally be a one because most businesses do a terrible job 
of nurturing, following up their leads. They don't do anything for the most part. And they will honestly admit it if you ask them, as I did, the CEO of, of, of this company that's, that's my client when I asked them this question. Now, sales conversion optimization, again, that's a, uh, that's a four would be generous. But, you know, everybody says, oh, I can convert, you know, 50% of everybody that I speak to in person. That's what everybody says. And of course, that's for referrals. That's warm leads. They're the easiest ones already pre-sold. But when it comes to new business, then it's much harder, as we all know, right? That's why you're in Sean's group, to learn to how to convert cold traffic into customers yourselves. But clients struggle with this as well, but relatively less compared to the first two. Now, delivery, again, typically most clients do a good job with delivering services. Again, let's be generous. For the most part, they have skills and experience and abilities where they can deliver on what they say they do, for the most part. Upselling, retaining, reselling, referring, typically a terrible job. Typically a terrible, so a two to be generous. Again, most clients don't have any systems in place. Now, where do you think the biggest opportunity is for them as a business to generate more revenue? Which is the easiest, most profitable, most cost-effective, fastest way to generate more revenue from any of these places right now? Again, we haven't got time for the interactive side, but the, the least um, cost-effective route is lead generation, getting cold new leads. Getting new, new customers is the most expensive function of every business. It costs the most. However, so uh, selling more to existing customers is always the easiest on the other end of the spectrum. The easiest way to make more revenue, sell more to the same people. But just below that is going to be converting more unconverted leads into, into customers. So nurturing unconverted leads. That is the number one opportunity because you don't have to pay for the lead. You've already got the lead. You just need to do a better job at nurturing them and converting them, giving them relevant high quality offers and taking them through a sales process. So there's a huge opportunity at, at lead nurture for just about every business out there. And so that's why I've started to shift conversations last year with all of my clients away from lead gen, or let's just say not only about lead gen but to start talking about nurture and converting more of their unconverted leads. So every serious business that has two plus or more high value clients needs a sales CRM. But most CRMs suck, right? Let me give you a couple. Now these suck probably the least, Pipedrive and HubSpot, but they still suck, right? I've used them both. Um, they're not the worst by any means. Like there are many that are far worse, but they're not, they're not as good as anywhere near as good as the one that sucks the least and it sucks the least by a long way and it allows you to profit far more than any other and that is high level now i don't know whether you uh, how many of you know high level those of you who've spoken with me will know a bit about it but high level is a tool designed for agencies to use with their clients. It's not designed for end users, like HubSpot and Pipedrive is designed for end users predominantly to use. Obviously there's agency partners, but generally it's designed for end users, retail clients to log in and use. High level is not. It's really designed for agencies to use as, a, as an add-on to the services they provide, whether it's lead gen or anything else. Now, when you have a sales CRM, you can deliver automated sequences like this. So remember, we've talked about LinkedIn earlier. So the LinkedIn leads, we've taken them and we've put them into a Google Sheet. We've separated out the, um, the M&H, medium and high responders, people are most interested. Now, what can we do? We can zap those people into a CRM. And in this case, I'm zapping them now into my, I mean, you could zap them into Pipedrive or HubSpot, I've done that before. But you, if you put them into your own agency high-level accounts, you're just in control of the whole thing a lot more. Then you can deliver, let's say if there was a lead magnet that was being offered by your client, you can, you can automate the delivery of the lead magnet. I have several clients that I do this for. I have one client that has a book and we offer to give away a free digital copy of the book to people. That's the lead magnet, starts a relationship when they say yes, bang, their information gets zapped onto the sheets, into high level, and then automatically gets the, the book fulfillment sequence, which is a sequence of messages, delivers the book, and then also sets them up for the opportunity to book a one-to-one -one phone appointment. Okay, so this is automation. This is going deeper into the funnel, using automation, and then you can build out things like landing pages. You can, in, you can push the data into other tools if they've got like a MailChimp email list. You can push the, these leads into there, all automated, thanks to Zapier. 
And then you can um, have clients automatically book appointments and you can set up automation inside high level to remind people of those appointments. And they don't need to use Calendly. They can use, the, they can use just high level. High level has a calendar booking function as well as it has web page building, has click funnels built into it. Right? It's, it has a whole bunch of different stuff. So you don't need to use those external tools. You can control the whole thing and add a ton more value to your client and get them more results. So this is an example of a Zap that takes connection requests. So this, in this case for a client, this is a LinkedIn connection request has been accepted. And now I'm, what am I doing? I'm zapping the information of the person who's accepted the connection request. I'm zapping them into Google Sheets to track them for the KPIs and also putting them into Contact Faster is my white label, what I call my white label version of high level. And you can see that consistently every day, there are people accepting the connection request. And they're automatically being put into the sales CRM sub account that is unique for the client that I set up, I control, and the client has access to. They can use to manage their leads, follow up with them, nurture them, and convert them. And this is incredibly powerful when you control this whole funnel. So that's what the zap looks like. The trigger is catching the hook because Expandy will be able to webhook the data from people that reply back um, out into anywhere, in this case into Zapier. We add the, the row in Google Sheets and then we add and update the contact in high level. But we don't just do it for new connections. We do it for replies as well. So when people reply to campaigns in LinkedIn, then the same thing happens. I mean, I, I love this. Why? Because I know you guys are having a lot of problems. I don't know how you've got on with the solution yet, but trying to trying to capture the replies of people from cold email is, is a nightmare. I mean, there's no way I've been able to do it other than manually copy and pasting the reply from the email, putting them onto a sheet somewhere. But with, with, with LinkedIn, Expandy in this case, the tool we're using, will capture that response from the LinkedIn message and it will push that out as a, as a field literally is a data field. So you can push the response, who it came from, when it came, into which account, which campaign, you can push that again into the Google Sheets row and then update the contact in high level. So you actually capture their responses in real time and you can message, you know, add a message to Slack. For some clients, I'll add on an email. I'll actually email the clients the LinkedIn message response that they've received. And clients appreciate that because they live on their email far more than the LinkedIn. As we know, LinkedIn is a terrible system for managing messages. So this, this also replaces that poor system that LinkedIn gives you. It's a much more efficient system. So this is now 100% automated and it's a total game changer. So let me show you what it looks like. So this is an example of a client, a prospect or a lead from, from a client and their LinkedIn connection, the LinkedIn connection and message has been automatically brought into high level. You can see the date and time as a note automatically. And once those positive replies have been received, now we can add the prospect into an auto campaign, which includes emails, SMS messages, and we can make them offers to, to qualify them further and take them to the next stage of our funnel. And the prospect and client can now engage directly with each other. They can communicate directly by email and SMS. An SMS is a game changer. It's a total game changer. It makes it so people respond to SMSs. Now the client can log in and, and text people back and they don't have to use their personal phone numbers. They can, they can use their business mobile number, as I call them, their, their, their contact faster number. It's a business email. It's a business phone number. And they, they are fully able to communicate with anyone they want to. And, it's, it, and everything gets tracked and measured so you can see the full history of interaction with those clients. This is a total game changer. And it, and it has been for all my clients. All messages are sent, received, and tracked now inside the CRM. Again, let me know, guys. I know this is, we're getting to some more advanced stuff now, but this is assuming you have a couple of clients. This is how you can help them go further into the funnel. Let me know if you have questions, though, as I, as I go along. So this is an example of a sequence. So once we add someone into a sequence, this is a, an automated sequence that includes, and you can see, an email that gets delivered as soon as they get added into the sequence. Then there's a delay, 15 minutes, when a text message goes out and it just says, hey, I just sent you an important email with a special offer related to your interested in whatever the specific product was that they're interested in. If you have any questions, message me back and be happy to help. All automated, we can set the timing when it goes out. So we don't wanna be sending it in the middle of the night. 
we can also send them a ringless voicemail. So 15 minutes later, we automate a ringless voicemail. If you, never, if you don't know what a ringless voicemail is, it's when you dial the person's phone. It doesn't have to be a mobile. So let's just say that, that there was one that failed here because obviously text messages only get sent to a mobile or a VoIP number. You can call the number, let's say it's a landline. It, it will call it once so they can see there was a missed call. Then it will call again and directly leave a recorded message on that person's mailbox. So it's 100% automated and it's extremely powerful, very useful, especially as part of a multi-step, multi-channel sequence. And it's 100% automated thanks to high level. And it's a total game changer. The sales reps that love it because it saves them time. They have to spend less time following up with leads so they can focus more on the warm opportunities. Christian, I'll come back to your message after I, after I, um, uh, after I, I just finished this, this, uh, this section here. So here's a more advanced use case. Right. So in this case, here we are web hooking. You can run a multi-channel, multi-step campaign, including LinkedIn outreach, cold email and phone follow up all via one high level campaign. So the first step in the sequence is a web hook. That web hook will add that contact into, the link, into a LinkedIn campaign via Expandy. So another thing I love about Expandy, it has web hook. You can web hook people into campaigns. It's amazing. So now I'm running the full campaign adding people into a LinkedIn outreach campaign. That's step one. Then step two is sending them a cold email. I can configure when they get added in. So, so, um, so I'm actually setting the time. The, the LinkedIn connection requests happen on Thursday and Friday. The, depending on how many people we're putting in, the cold email only goes out later on Friday. Then we can set up a task for a sales rep to call them manually, as well as send them follow, more follow-on call, cold emails it further down the line. And if they accept the connection request in Expandy, they will automatically get the follow-up messages all done in Expandy. So this is multi-channel campaigns with LinkedIn and cold email and other steps, including phone calls, all run from high level. Incredibly powerful, but obviously more advanced. When you get the leads, you then put them into a pipeline like this. Again, clients love this. So they can see, and you typically have to help them design the different stages that makes sense. This is kind of like pipe drive, but again, you don't have to use pipe drive. You can just use high level, put the leads in, have the, have the client manage those leads through the different stages they need to go through. It's, it's, it's a total game changer. Clients are disorganized. They don't have systems and processes for the most part, how to manage leads, nurture. You are, you could help in them by giving them a system like this. So Joe, how do you know the prospect's phone number to leave a voice message? Yeah, you've got to get the phone number as part of the data scraping, right? If you're scraping the data for the campaign, you know, you're going to get a phone number as well as an email and a LinkedIn profile. So typically, I mean, if you're using sources like Apollo or Zoom Info or hiring a VA to do it, it's pretty easy to get a, a, a landline, like a corporate number. Obviously, if you, you know, to get more, you know, to get Phone numbers of people, like mobile phone numbers, cost a lot more. It takes a lot more effort, but that can be done too. So no, you've got to, you've got to source the data first, 100%. What you can also do then is you can track the results. So talking about KPIs and demonstrating your value, high level has these dashboards where you can see how much business has been closed, how much is open, what the conversion rate is, how many leads were opened, were opened are still open and have been closed or lost. And you can look for specific periods, how many opportunities this month compared to last month, you know, the lead flow, et cetera. So you're giving yourself the ability to demonstrate from beginning to end the ROI that you're generating for your clients. Just as long as you know which leads convert through to, through to actual paying clients, you can track that all the way back from lead source, from campaign source. You get the full credit for the value you're adding. Total game changer. This is, you can also manage email lists through it. So this is the email list for my connected clients list. So you can see one other thing here, I, which I love is the, is the lead score. So on the right-hand side, you can actually in high level, there's an add-on which is actually free for a third party where you can score people. One, if they open the email, three, if they click, five, if they reply. So think about it, if you've got a sales team, your client has a sales team, or even if it's just a, a one-man band responding, or, you, or if you're doing the nurture because you're trying to book the calls for your clients, where should your internal sales rep focus to try and generate more appointments for your clients? 
focus on the people that have the highest lead score, the people who've engaged the most with the content, the, the emails, and more that you've shared with them. Like this is literally the top 20 list of people, best prospects to reach out to, just sorted in reverse order, who is engaged the most with the sequence that they've gone through. A total game changer and, and incredible value when you can offer this to your client in addition to generating the leads and automating follow-up sequence. So high level, $97 per month just for one business. You want to use it for your agency, no other client businesses that's what it is and it's, it's frankly it's a steal at that price it's 297 a month should be per month for unlimited client sub accounts at no extra cost so this is the level where you now become a, a serious agency with multiple clients you can create unlimited sub accounts <clears throat> for no extra cost just that flat monthly fee and basically for you can charge that you know one or two clients you've got that cost covered and the, and the app the whole app for you is completely free. I'll come, I'll talk more about that. So you can also use high level for cold email. So um, you can add in SMTP providers like Google or Office 365, or even Amazon, SES, but I, uh, and SendGrid, SendGrid, but I recommend MailGut. <clears throat> Number one recommendation, integrates the best, get the best stats with high level. And I think with, with MailGun, you pay, is it 40 bucks a month for 50,000 emails per month? It's a lot of emails. And it doesn't matter how you could have 25 clients. And if you don't send more than 50,000 emails, you're paying 40 bucks. Compare that to Lemlist, Mailshake, right? Um, they're, they're all going to be charging you per email domain, regardless how many emails you send out. So, you know, you can really bring your costs in house and, and control the whole process a lot more. And actually, you can send more volume with Mailgun because Lemlist drastically, especially restricts the speed with which follow-up emails get sent out is terrible. I can't stand it. It's just a scam really to sell you more accounts. But, um, but we're here, you, you can send out as many emails as you want, but you are responsible for maintaining and managing the relationship of your domain, which is as it should be as a responsible emailer. So 14 day free trial, get highlevel.net. That's my, that's my link. I support all my referrals personally. So if it's something you want to jump on board with, get a trial, let me know while you're in trial and I can, I can tell you more about ways that I can support your use of high levels. I'm putting together a small group of people that um, I've already referred into so I can make sure they get additional support from me in addition to the support you get from high level. All right, so let's go back to, before we get on to level four. So Chris, you had a question. How do we get started if we are beginners in the LinkedIn game? What's the minimal thing we could do before we use high level? Okay, how do we get started if we beginners? In, I, I, how do we get started if we're beginners in the LinkedIn game? I, I don't know. You need to ask me a different question. Are you trying to get uh, LinkedIn leads for you? Well, I mean, follow the process I outlined here. Optimize your profile. Follow the five steps. You do it manually or use software, whatever. Um, if you want to, if you want to offer LinkedIn as a service to your clients, you've got to you've got to get experience in it, just like with cold email. So be your be your own client first. Generate leads for yourself via LinkedIn for you. Then when you're, if you're looking for, to add that as a client service, then you've actually got some real world experience you can talk from, okay? That's the first thing. Uh, what's, the min uh, what's the minimal thing we can do before we use high level? I don't know what you mean, the minimal thing we could do. Speaking of before getting more clients. I mean, you might need to ask that question again. I'm not quite sure what you're asking me there, Chris. But uh, if you want to kind of clarify that one, I'll, 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 I'll pick, that, pick up on that. Right. So let me, this is short and it kind of adds on to the, to the last section about high level and CRM automation. Because by now, hopefully you've seen the power of what this CRM automation is, can do for your agency. It's totally transformed the longevity of, of, of retention, really, for my clients, the value I can add to them. Um, positions me as an expert. I now pick up consulting clients. I'm working with S SDR specialists and now referring me to other clients. That you know, people are giving up their Salesforce accounts to 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 use my white label, and it's all because of the power of this SaaS. Basically, I am selling SaaS as well as agency, and this is the number one opportunity for agencies, 2021 and beyond, become a SaaS seller as well as an agency service provider. I'm not saying don't provide agency services. I'm not saying that, but sell SaaS as well as your agency services. 
for there are multiple reasons why this is going to help you. So I now sell my SaaS contact fast entirely separately from my agency or consulting services. I charge my clients $200 to $300 just to access the software per month. They don't pay, they get turned off and they pay, right? Because people will pay for software and that's a, a steal, right? Compare that to what they would have to pay with comparable CRMs. Close.io, you'd have to be paying at least $95 per month per user per month to be able to, to, to get anywhere close to the same amount of functionality. And I can give my clients kind of unlimited users for that price right now. Coming in the future, you'll be able to do just what Close.io does with high level. You'll be able to charge clients per user per month. Coming very soon, you'll be able to charge them for their every text message they send out. You'll be able to put a margin on top of it. So every time they send a text message, you can put a 30%, 50%, 100% margin on top of what it costs you to send that text message. And it doesn't cost a lot, but but that can add up very quickly to be an income stream that's you know completely passive. So SaaS is coming on top of this. Now, agency fees are on top of this, of course, because that's nobody's, you're not going to make a fortune just from that alone, but you only need 20, I mean, that's the let's just say it's $300 a month, $3,600 a year. You only need 28 clients paying $300 a month, 28 clients paying $300 a month to have a 100K per year business. Just for so Now, if, if these people stick, which they do because software is sticky, you've just generated recurring income that you control with, plus you have the ability because of your position with them. Now they're customers. Yours, you can upsell them anything you want to. And you're not having to go after cold people. You have a relationship with them. So you can pick and choose who you provide agency services for, the best prospects, and you can upsell them for complete, you know, com com completely easily. And guess what? If they don't want to use your agency services, they're still paying for the SaaS. So you're still getting something. You still keep the relationship going, even if they don't want you to run their ad budget or their cold outreach campaign for them for in one month or multiple months. I've already had one client do that. Like December is a slow month. So if one client didn't want me to do an outreach campaign, but he still had to pay for the software. And then we picked up things from January and started again. Very, very powerful. So they'll lose everything if they stop paying. Access to the platform and data history. Sticky. People, people stay for years with their CRM once they've got them on board. It's not the easiest thing to sell necessarily always initially, but people generally love software. They will pay for it. I've had clients pay $1,000 a month for 10 months just to use the SaaS. And that was, so and they, they, you know, they were happy with that, got a lot of value. I supported them with it, but they were, they were super happy. So my message to you, Stop building, you know, stop giving you and your clients money to costly email senders and CRM platforms and start to bring this in-house because I have multiple clients that stop their Salesforce subscription so they can use my software instead. I basically have taken Salesforce's customers and they've now become my customers for software. I want you to think about that and the opportunity you have to potentially sell software in addition to your services. It could be the front end. It could be the first transaction level. It could be a downsell. Let's say you do a discovery call and, and, and they don't go for your full price package, downsell them to just the software. You can just you can give them a system where they can plug their existing database of leads into. They can re, re, um, kind of remarket to them. They can, um, they can kind of reactivate them. And you can give them access to do that. They'll get a great experience. And guess what? They're going to come to you when they say, that's good. Can we get more leads coming through? Right. Now it's time to talk to you, either for advertising or for, or for cold outreach. Okay. It's extremely powerful. So, Joe, did you build your, this SaaS in your high-level account? This is high-level. This is my, this is high-level, but under my brand. So, Contact Faster is my brand. I made up out of thin air. And I, are you at the 297 a month? you can have your own white label. So you can call it whatever you want. I have contactfaster.com domain, which you go to contactfaster.com, you will see this little mini website. So it looks like it's a proper professional tool, which it is. Uh, people can't buy it off there because I don't want them to, but they can book a call from me if, they, if they're interested. And that's it. So, so we're white labeling your own dashboard and letting others onto it. Yeah, but they, they have their own sub accounts. So clients only see their sub account. 
They obviously don't see my account or anybody else's. So you are you have the God level access to everything. They just have access to what you give them access to. Just the same way as all these other SaaSes do. Just the same way, but you own the SaaS. And it's incredibly powerful once you uh, embrace this. So let me just sum up because we're now done, guys. So um, four lessons learned from running a part-time multi-six-figure lifestyle agency. Number one, the power of LinkedIn. Number two, the power of client retention. Number three, the power of sales CRM automation. Number four, the power of selling SaaS plus agency. Now, again, that's going to take, it's going to take a little while for some of, the, some of those concepts to sink in. But I guarantee you that those that, that, that really get the power of this, you're going to see the greatest benefits. And all of my efforts this year are going to be on selling agency services with a SaaS level, 300 bucks a month to get access to a restricted amount of functionality, but still high value as well as an upsell opportunity to a full service platform where they may get ads, manage for them, lead gen, the, the whole shebang at the premium price point, right? That's, that's the plan, the strategy moving forward for this year and the retention of the SaaS customers. You, cause you can, you've got no fulfillment issues. You could add five new customers a week. Somebody do the maths on that, five new customers a week, 20 a month. For twelve, like three hundred dollars a month, I mean, you could charge them a setup fee. You could charge them a setup fee, like, and there are many people that charge three hundred dollars setup fee plus three hundred a month, right? Think of that, how that compounds very, very quickly. And the st again, it comes down, comes down to retention. If they stay, and you have the ability to up to pick and choose up selling people to whatever services you want, you are now built an agency that's actually now it's a saleable asset because of the retention you have, the the, the branding. Of the, of the SaaS under your own domain. And by the way, don't call your SaaS the same as your agency. Brand the SaaS something different. My agency is more results. You can see more results marketing, that's the agency uh, branding, but my SaaS is contact faster. So separate your branding from the two. Big, big, big uh, lesson there. So I just wanna say thanks, Sean and the crew, you guys at Closing Clients. You rock. Seriously, great, awesome value. You provide everybody in your membership. And if you got value from today's call and you're not on my Connected Clients email list, then go sign up, connectedclients.co. Would love to have you on there and let me know if I can help you further in any way. So thanks very much. Let me, I'll keep the, uh, you want me to keep the recording rolling while we do Q&A if anyone's good for, for, if, if there are questions that people want me to ask them. Yeah, keep it, keep it rolling. I really keep appreciate it, it, James. No worries, guys. So I know it's, I, I kind of imagine it'd be about an hour 15. So, um, so by the time we got started, it was about, it was around about quarter past. So was that okay? Any feedback, questions? What do you think of it, guys? Because have I, have I, I, I've got a combination of new ideas, strategy, stuff you've not seen before, but also some stuff that I think that you, 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 know, you will know a little bit about, like basic LinkedIn outreach. But I went into some detail that if you're getting started just doing LinkedIn outreach for yourself or for your clients, that's where you need to focus on today. But let me know. Um, any more questions or thoughts on anything that I've covered? No question. Everyone's quiet now. No, you're not going to unmute yourself and speak yeah. to Jim. <laughs> well, it's only a small group, so that's all cool. So again, um, well, let me ask you this. Um, what do you think of the thought? What do you think of the stuff we shared? Useful? Valuable? Anything? Can you see some potential? What is the most useful or the most um, valuable takeaway for you from the call today? Let me know in the chat. And any other feedback whatsoever, because otherwise we'll be wrapping up pretty quickly and get on with the rest of our day. So Chris, uh, expanding hyperize, are they enough to get started? Well, they're enough to get started to do LinkedIn and personalized image marketing. Yes, they, they, they are. So when you say get started, get started doing what? You need to be specific what, you're, what, what you mean by getting started, right? So you've got to be specific. If you've been doing LinkedIn outreach for yourself, then yes, you don't need to use hyperize in the personalized images, but I do recommend it. I recommend it because you can use it in your emailing as cold emails, as well as in your LinkedIn and you will really separate yourself. So think of how many people are going to your market offering the same offers as you right now. Is that an issue for you? Well, how many people are going to your market with personalized images right now? Let me tell you, freaking no one. <laughs> no one. Blue ocean opportunity for you to separate yourself from the crowd. And what about getting results for your clients? 
how easy are you finding it to book meetings for your clients right now? Is that easy for you? Could you do with some help to get them more, more, more bookings? Are you being paid per meeting, right? If you are, would you like to book more meetings and get paid more for relatively little extra effort? If so, start looking at personalized image marketing. Start looking, I mean, LinkedIn outreach for, for clients is obviously, it's a, it's a different issue because you've got to have permission to use their LinkedIn profile. So it's, it's, it's a different thing. But let's just say right now that, I mean, certainly use the personalized images in your cold email outreach for your clients. That's easy. You just need the Hyperize account. Right. And and then and there are other tools you can use for just email. I mean, you could use Nifty Images. It's built into Lemlist. I mean, there's there's no, there's numerous ways you can get personalized images if you just want to use them in email. But uh, I do like Hyperize. It's a good company, good software, good support, and uh, you can definitely use it very easily with LinkedIn. So cool. Hope that answers your question, Chris. And I think we're good otherwise, Sean. So, so I mean, if you have anything else, uh, any question you, you want to ask or, or otherwise, I think we're good, mate. No, I think that's, I just want to thank you again. I think it, just seeing a little snippet into high level, um, I need to get on the phone with you, don't I, and get that set up. Um, you, you do, my friend. It will be a game changer for everyone. And I understand you might not be able to put all the pieces of the puzzle together yet, but if you don't start somewhere, like the, the key thing is, are we focusing on the right things? I'm telling you from experience, high level has completely transformed how I do business in my agency. I'm not making yeah. it up. I got no reason to, to to make that up for you, right? I'm not in the business of make. I'm no, telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get on it. It's just having to, I just haven't prioritized it when it, it should be a priority. Oh, dude, I mean, no, no issues because I mean, you're, we're all busy, right? We're all, got, we're all doing millions of things and this, this doesn't necessarily seem like it's something that's going to make the biggest difference necessarily in the short term compared to yeah. other stuff you've got going on. I totally get it. But when, especially when you're in the business of getting results for your clients, and you're generating leads and you want to be able to follow up and if you want to do multi-channel like the stuff nick talked about you yeah. talked about multi if you want to do multi-channel how the hell are you coordinating your multi-channel campaigns whether it's for you or for your clients because please enlighten me because if you've got a great solution i am the first to be listening i don't know anything better than this software for doing multi-channel outreach campaigns right now uh, yeah, for, for the for the cost the cost effectiveness of it let's put it like that at least mm -hmm. you and know? just the fact that you can sell your own SaaS from it Dude, it's so easy. People love it. People love the software. Like it's people love software. Period. Right? Think how much money we we all spend on software. Go and look at your software expenses. Right? How much money do we do we spend to these these, these people? And you know, and and so your clients will too. And and it's just a great way to build a relationship with them. Keep them sticking on something. So it it is like your moat. So my contact faster is basically my moat. For my clients right now it is my amazon prime so every yeah. single one of you can have your own amazon prime today you know when you jump on board with high level especially once you get your own white label and you can start to market that it becomes your ip doesn't matter it's a white label i tell everybody it's high level i'm not keeping it a secret i don't care people will come to me because i'm the, i'm the marketing expert and they'll trust me and they, they will want to work with me not high level directly or anyway and high level only works with agencies so your clients you know can't really join high level directly it's designed for agencies only so so again i i just want to show you guys stuff that nobody talks about on twitter i haven't talked about it much yet either because it is a little bit of a i mean it's a little bit of a complex subject to to to, to, to broach and if you're listen right now if you're just at the stage where you're looking to get the first couple of clients forget about high level right don't even think about high level if you haven't got at least two high paying clients paying you monthly right now your focus is getting those clients, and I don't care how you do it, manually, carry a pigeon, whatever, right? Get those clients in first, start delivering results, get some cash flow in. But as soon as you have two or more, you, not, you need to start thinking about operations, systems. The stuff that Nick talked about last week, right? That, that um, How are you going to start doing that? Well, you know, this is one way that you can really easily start to scale systems and processes. And, and Nick will tell you himself, like, high level has been the biggest game changer. He was tweeting about it, I think, even today. The biggest game changer for him in his business has been high level. It's, so. it's, it's not like it's, it's a USP for your outreach, isn't it? In, in terms of having your own um, CRM to manage leads and you know, they'll have ownership of that. And they can have their own sub accounts and things like that. Yep. And to be fair, I mean, high level is just launching a big push for a SaaS level right now. And it's making it easier and easier for people to come on board. But basically the things you can do, like you can just sell people a SaaS level where they have a web chat widget. So that web chat widget is just like a, a web chat widget they can put on their existing website. 
that says, hey, if you've got any questions, leave me your, leave me your number, and I'll text you back. So it's not a, it's not a live chat that's done, on, that's done on, on the internet. They are generally poor experiences, live chat. They're very poor experience on mobile. And also if people don't respond in, in real time, people get annoyed and they leave. That's the problem with live chat. You need to have it manned 24 seven really, or at least during the day. Um, but with a web chat, you say, leave, leave us a message, we'll get back to you. But you get their phone number and then you can text them back. So now you've, you just generated a lead with a text, with a phone number. The phone number is way more valuable than just the email, right? So people respond to text messages all day long. So now you've got a lead, you can follow up with them inside high level. You can have your you know, teams follow up with them. It doesn't have to be you. And you can sell that to businesses. A business any, that get traffic to their website, even a small amount, they will generate additional leads for free because of this web chat. Um, tool and you can offer that 300 bucks a month and you and that would be tremendous value for pretty much any small business like just no doubt about it so that's just one small example right there's lots of different ways that you can create an offering that you can then go to market and you're not just then selling immediately the offer of i'm gonna book you 10 meetings you know next month and that's it right that's you're just changing the channel it's like if i could get you additional free leads without you spending any more money on advertising or any web costs like, would you be interested? I mean, that's yeah. like, that's a, I mean, you're going to pay attention to that. But you could probably going to respond to that and say, tell me more. Now you've got the chance to jump on a phone call. Now you can diagnose them properly and you can find out where they're at. And it gives you the opportunity to either sell the agency service or just sell the SaaS and start to build a relationship. And then when they're ready, then they can go for the agency service. Once you build enough trust, it's a total game changer in terms of how you do your outreach. And, but also the, you know, the, the, the revenue you can bring into your agency and the retention, the recurring revenue into your business. So I'll, I'll stop there, Sean, because I can talk about this all day otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> well, does, does anyone have any, have any final questions? For Question from Joe, yeah. Uh, so what do you usually say in your initial message to persuade people to connect? Yeah, so here's the thing, Joe. Um, if I was to tell you that message and then everyone goes out and use the same message, it kind of it, it diminishes the value. So I, what I would say is I would keep it short and sweet. Be prepared to test. You don't have to use personal first lines. No, I haven't talked about personal first lines at all in this presentation because I, I have I hardly even used them before. I'm starting to try them now. I, I know for, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty darn sure that if you were to incorporate a personal first line in a LinkedIn connection request, pretty darn sure you're going to get fantastic results because nobody does it and you will really stand out. So, um, I mean, if, if, the, if the leads are high value prospects, try personal first lines. And if you're, if you're using personal first lines in email, use the exact same thing, just a shortened version of that personal first line, use it in your LinkedIn connection request. Um, so, so that's one thing you, but even if you don't just keep it short and sweet say, you know, Hey, we'd love to connect. Thanks, Joe, something like that. Right. That's people short and sweet, be friendly, have good energy. I, what I would avoid are the platitudes like, Oh, I'm looking to expand my network or all the stuff that you've heard a million times before. You just don't want to sound like everybody else. That's what I would. Yeah. And, and the final thing is if you've got good, a good, strong profile with good messaging, and, and then people will connect in any case, even if the connection message is not like the most innovative in the world. Just, you know, that's keep it short and sweet, focus more on your profile, then test different messages and see, again, let the data guide you as to what gets best results. So I hope that helps, Joe. I, I'm sorry, I can't just give you a script and, you know, and say, and then, then we'll be in like we're in with cold email wizard, right? 20,000 people all using the same script, <laughs> right? So, um, but just, yeah, just keep it short, friendly, um, and, and that will do the job as, as much uh, if you've done a good job of positioning your profile uh, appropriately. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for the feedback. I appreciate that, mate. Thanks very much indeed. Cool. All right. So I think we're good, Sean. So what I'm going to do is yeah. try and stop the, let me stop the recording.